Hey, I'm Ryan, and welcome to Ness Hacker. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a ROM hack that I did recently for the original Final Fantasy that makes shopping a little nicer. Final Fantasy is one of my all-time favorite games. I've loved this game since I was about eight years old, and when I go back to play it, I tend to have a pretty fun and nostalgic time. Except when I go shopping, I f***ing hate shopping in this game. The original Final Fantasy doesn't allow you to buy items in bulk. You can only buy a single item at a time, and you have to go through like three menus to do so. It's madness. I caught a Final Fantasy randomizer race on speed gaming a while back and noticed that they added bulk buying at item shops. This inspired me to do my own bulk buying hack as it seemed like a pretty fun and interesting challenge. There are a lot of cool aspects to the hack that I want to discuss, so I decided to split up my coverage into multiple parts. In this episode, I'll give a general overview of the hack and show the methods that I use to map out how the game uses RAM while running. In future episodes, I'll cover the techniques I use to find where the game performs certain actions, show how I structured my code, and even dive into some of the algorithms that I used. But before we go too far, do me a favor by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. After that, we'll take a look at exactly what I think makes for a better Final Fantasy shop. My goal for this hack was to add bulk buying to the game, mostly so I didn't have to waste a bunch of time buying heals during my next playthrough. It didn't seem particularly important to add this feature for weapons, armor, or magic, because at most you'd be buying one or two copies of each during a normal playthrough. So I decided to focus entirely on modifying the game's logic for item shops in particular. For the graphics and user interface, I thought it best to keep things simple. I'd use a slightly modified approach to the one used by the randomizer developers that would display the quantity and total gold in the upper left shop menu. The controls also seem straightforward, as I wanted them to work the way they do in modern JRPGs. So I would have the left and right buttons decrease and increase the quantity, respectively. Further, I wanted to have the value wrap around when you went past the minimum or maximum quantity. To make the overall shopping experience more convenient, I decided that the game should automatically determine the maximum number of items that can be bought and limit the player accordingly. This, along with the wraparound feature, should make it easy to quickly stock up on items when preparing for an adventure. Finally, and this was more of an implicit goal, I didn't want to change the core game mechanics in any way for this hack. For instance, I wasn't going to try to make the game easier by lowering the cost of certain items. With that, my goal was clear. Add bulk buying to item shops with minimal graphics using common JRPG controls and done in such a way that the base game was otherwise unaffected. The first thing I needed to do for the hack was to figure out exactly how the CPU memory was structured when the game was running. Having this mapped out would help me keep my bearings when I was doing different types of hacking later. The 6502 processor on the NES can address up to a maximum of 64 kilobytes of memory, and this memory space is subdivided into functional regions. Roughly speaking, the upper half of the memory is controlled by the game cartridge itself, so the structure of that region can vary from game to game. The vast majority of that memory is generally occupied by information coming from the game's program ROM, which is usually subdivided into a set of 16 kilobyte banks. The game's mapper circuitry determines which of these banks are active in the CPU memory space at any given time. Figuring this out is actually pretty easy, and all you really need to know is the model number on the cartridge's board. From the looks of the label on my copy of the game, the US version of Final Fantasy uses an SN ROM board. The next step was to look up the technical details about the board type. People have been hacking games for years, so there's a plethora of information on the web about NES cartridge boards and how they work. The best resource I know of for this type of information is the Nestev wiki. According to the wiki, SNROM is a variant of the SXROM board family, all of which use the Nintendo MMC1 chip for mapping the program ROM banks. Additionally, SNROM boards have either 8 or 16 banks of program ROM alongside an 8 kilobyte program RAM. By looking at the game's ROM file header, I was able to determine that Final Fantasy has 16 banks of program ROM. Putting this all together, I was able to construct a pretty nice map of the CPU memory. 
The first two kilobytes of memory are always mapped to the NES's internal RAM. For technical reasons that are way outside of scope for this episode, these memory locations are then mirrored three more times. So this effectively means that the first eight kilobytes of addressable CPU memory are occupied by the system RAM and its mirrors. The next 16 kilobytes are occupied by various memory mapped input and output registers along with their mirrors. These I.O. registers allow the CPU to control other NES subsystems, such as the picture processing and audio processing units. Final Fantasy's battery-backed program RAM occupies the next 8 kilobytes of memory. It's used to store a variety of information, such as the party's composition and inventory. Since it's connected to a battery, this information will persist even if the NES is turned off. Finally, the game keeps two 16 kilobyte program ROM banks mapped to the upper half of the CPU's addressable memory. The first 16 kilobytes are generally referred to as the lower bank. The game uses the MMC1 mapper chip to switch this region between any of the 16 program ROM banks at runtime. The last 16 kilobytes are called the upper bank, and the game keeps this region fixed to the last bank on the ROM chip. As a side note, if you want to refer to a specific bank on a program ROM, you often just use its hexadecimal index number. And as is the custom with most things in computer science, you start counting with zero instead of one. So the first bank would be called bank 00, the second bank would be called bank 01, so on and so forth, all the way up to the 16th and final bank, which is usually referred to as bank 0F. My next job was to determine where the game stored some key information in RAM while it was running. At the top of my list was the party's gold and inventory. Any shop code that I modified was going to have to work with these variables, so I kind of needed to know where they were. If you haven't used it before, FCEUX is an awesome emulator with a ton of features that are essential for tool-assisted speedruns, game development, and ROM hacking. To track down the memory locations I was looking for, I used a combination of the RAM search, RAM watch, and cheats tools. I used the RAM search tool to find suspected locations for the data I was tracking. It allows you to browse the contents of RAM while the game is running and then apply filters to narrow down the search space. To find the party's gold, my plan was pretty simple. I'd start a new game, then track down any memory locations that match the amount of gold that I had. You start the game with 400 gold, which is too much to fit into a single byte of memory. So this meant I was looking for at least a two byte number. I applied my filter and the search results showed only one memory location that matched my criteria. The two byte region starting at RAM address 61C. My next step was to confirm the location using the cheats tool. The FCEUX cheats tool acts in a similar way to the old game Genie. Basically, it lets you choose a memory location in the game's RAM and override the value. To test the party's gold location, I set up a simple cheat that would keep my gold count fixed to 10,000. Then I checked the value in the menu and tried to buy some items to see if the value remained fixed. After a bit of trial and error, I determined that the party's gold is stored in a 3-byte unsigned integer at memory locations 61C through 61E. To find the memory associated with the party's inventory, I did exactly what used to drive me nuts about shopping in this game when I was a kid. I started buying heels. First, I bought four heels and cleared the RAM search results. Next, I set up a filter to find the values that had changed only one time, then bought one more heel and applied that filter. Finally, I set up one last filter to isolate those remaining locations that now equaled the value five. This resulted in a single memory location at address 6039. I confirmed this by setting the number of heels to a specific value using the cheats tool, and then comparing that number to what was reported on the game's inventory screen. As I got more accustomed to the game and how it seemed to operate, I used a similar technique to find some RAM locations associated with the shops. For instance, the game uses a value at memory location 45 to determine which shop to load when the player enters the building. Also, the game stores a table starting at address 0300 that dictates what items a shop sells. You can actually manipulate this memory to make a shop sell the Massive Mune, the most powerful weapon in the game. I may have had a little fun with this. Anyway, I found all these memory locations and made note of them using FCEUX's RAM watch tool. This is a pretty nice tool that lets you keep track of specific locations in RAM and display their values when the game is running. 
One important note about the tool is that you need to save your list, otherwise it'll go away when you restart the emulator. RAM hacking is a pretty fun and easy way to get started modifying classic NES games. If you're interested and haven't tried this before, I highly recommend downloading FCE UX and messing around with a few games. If you find any cool memory locations or fun ways to manipulate Final Fantasy, go ahead and let me know in the comments. So I think this is a good place to wrap things up. In this episode, I discussed my general idea for the Final Fantasy hack, showed how to map out the game's CPU memory, and stepped you through how to use FCE UX to find specific RAM locations. Thanks for watching NES Hacker. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon if you want to be notified when I post the second part of my Final Fantasy Shop hack. And if you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments.